Hello, this is Sprocket314 and welcome to a new episode. Um, so basically, today I have a big announcement to make. Uh, I, I finally completed the uh, website, so you can actually get your rush score uh, from today. So just go to the website sprocket314.tk, that's Tango Kilo, and uh, you can enter your, your copy and paste better copy and paste from the master ball the name of your deck that you want to check and then click on get score and then you will get it within five seconds you will get the the score and now the website is not perfect uh, i'm still working on it so this is considered sort of like an early access just to get people to to use it uh, but uh, the caveat is that the file add upload uh, option uh, is still live but it will uh, has it has some certain difficulties. So basically, if you have a list, a text file with one uh, deck uh, per line, uh, it usually a txt file. Okay, uh, no word document, PDF, that won't work. It has to be a text file, and then you put one uh, one of um, deck per line, uh, and don't leave a space at the bottom. Uh, just uh, you know, normal. Then it will it will work if you don't have any special characters. So basically, if you don't have quotation marks, if you don't have accented uh, letters, if you don't have umlaut, so it will work if you don't have those things. Because I have a, at the moment I have an encoding problem because I'm using Cherry Pie, which is a minimalistic web server uh, from Python, and is basically the encoding I have at the moment is Latin one, which only reaches until uh, the first 256 characters, so it's the basic characters. And those will work, like the normal standard stuff will work. But if you have a special characters, it won't work. Uh, but there is a workaround while I'm sorting this out in the forums and trying to get uh, help from the people from the Cherry Pie community. So the, the idea is that if you have decks, a long list of decks, and and then uh, you have some of them with special characters like quotation marks or accepted uh, or apostrophes. Apostrophe is very important also to get the right apostrophe because sometimes you think you're putting the correct one. And uh, if you didn't copy and paste from the master vault, it will, will not work. Um, and a good check to know if it will work or not is if you copy the text that you have back into the master vault and search for your deck. And if you, if you can find it, my script will find it. So now, there is a workaround. So if you have a long list of uh, 100 decks, okay, and uh, you remove the ones that have the special characters, and you have a, a list of, let's say, 90 that are fine, you use the special file upload thing, and it's going to work. Now, it's going to work, but it's going to take a long time. Because it, remember, it's around 5 seconds per deck, and if you have 90 decks, is going to take 450 minutes, uh, sorry, 450 seconds, which is a long time, like uh, 10 minutes or so, right? It's going to, well, not, not 10 minutes, but 8 minutes or so. So the thing is, it's going to take a long time. And it's going to look, when you click on give me my score, uh, it's going to take that long because it's a lot of work for the for the thing. No, It has to go to the website, to the API from the master vault, extract the information, process the information, and then get assigned the score, and then over and over again for a hundred times like, or 90 times. So it's going to take time. So I'm working on putting like a please wait website where you will click on it and then it will say, please wait. And it will just keep and it will refresh every 30 seconds or so to uh, until the pop up. There is a, there will be a pop up where you have your file that you can download. So it's a report and it will automatically rank your decks by rush score from the top one to the bottom one. So all of this is great and good, but just remember, it's, it's still working. It's just simply, it's taking some time because it's five seconds per deck. So it, it will take, if you have lots of decks, it will take quite, quite some time, a few minutes. Now, what happens with the ones that have the special characters? No problem. You go to the normal search box, you put them there one by one manually, and it will it, it will work because I don't have to, um, I don't have the problem with encoding when uh, file encode. So you just, uh, copy and paste in the main search box that will work with any character there's no problem with encoding so you know um, I am more than happy to, to help you troubleshoot uh, I've seen I've seen it all I know every possible combination of error 
And um, so I'll just leave it, leave it in the comments and I will respond, you know, how can you uh, get it to work? So I will keep working on this to make sure I can get the best user experience. I can solve this issue with encoding so that you can just upload the file, leave it running in the background and then it will pop up when it's ready. OK, so um, enjoy it. Leave me some comments and tell me if you like it or not. Um, so that's that. So that was the big announcement for today. But more importantly, today um, I I have the uh, interview. I did an interview with Rachel Primble, which is the Eindhoven uh, Voltor champion, and she's from here from the UK. So I had the pleasure to interview her, and and, and I'm gonna uh, give you the interview with you right now. Uh, it's uh, I had really good time uh, doing the interview. Uh, Rachel is is great. Uh, she actually has a, a game store as well where she sells uh, open decks. And you can just, uh, it has a little system where you choose the house for the first one and then it will filter and then you choose the next one and you will filter again and choose the next one. And you can get all 35 combinations of, of the uh, seven houses. So I hope you enjoyed that. And well, let's go. Let's go to the interview. Bye. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, this is Sprocket314, and today I'm here with Eindhoven Volto champion Rachel Trimble. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'm very happy to to have you on on you know on the on the um, episode. And uh, basically, um, Rachel, you are from uh, Lincolnshire, no? In Lincoln, in in England, right? Yes. Yeah, Lincolnshire. Yes, in UK. Yes. Very good. And uh, I would, you know, myself, I, I live also in the UK, uh, in Surrey, and uh, I'm planning on going to Birmingham uh, Vault Tour because it's closer than in Hoven, right? In, yes, in yeah, place. much closer. So what did you, what did you uh, why did you go to, to Holland first? Um, well, for, for the, obviously the Birmingham one's coming up in a few months and it's obviously sealed, which is quite interesting, but um, it's the only weekend I'm not free. In, oh. in summertime, so I could not make it, um, which yeah, was very, <laughs> yeah, very got the bite. Um, so I did want to go to another vault tour, but I hadn't decided on what one yet. I didn't know how far they were away. Um, and it was one morning last week, um, I seen somebody post on a Facebook group saying, oh, I'm going to the vault tour and asking for some advice. And I thought, oh, there's a vault tour this weekend in Eindhoven. I thought, I'm off this weekend. Why not just go? Um, so I looked up some prices. The boat was very cheap to go to France and it was only two and a half hours from France so I um I booked myself on for the Friday. Um and then no, as I came down to annoying my other half, I actually came down that morning and saying I'm off the end of this weekend. Um of which we then find out that it was also his birthday that weekend. So it's amazing. Bit... <laughs> it's amazing how things just happen, right? You know, yes, who, yeah, who, yeah. who would have told you, right? Like, yes, why not? Let's go. And then let's see what happens. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I didn't know what deck I was going to play. I didn't know anything. It was just, let's just go. Let's just, let's just go and play. It's a bit of fun. Um, it's, a, so it's a good game. Was it your first tournament? I think you have commented in the Facebook group that you have already played in Chainbound events. And have you been in, Yes. How many more tournaments uh, have you played before this one? Um, so I've played quite a few Chainbound events. Okay. Um, so um, obviously the very first tournament I went to was the pre-release in London. Yeah. Um, obviously when the game first came out, so that was, that was really interesting, but obviously you still didn't know the game, there's a lot of mistakes and things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I went to a couple of Tomb Bomb events, so I, I managed to get um, a deck that I quite liked. It had a few heavy Mars creatures in it, so I really yes. liked them. I took a liking to Mars, so it had three Dominator Bubbles, not Dominator Bubbles, three Felix Dominators. Yes, um, yes. It had a Chuffy Ape, and it also had an Ephra Spider. And I thought this would be quite interesting to, if somebody doesn't have a board wipe, well, how are they going to get their Amber back from my Ephra Spider? Um, That's right. So I quite liked it. It didn't have a lot of quick amber game, but it, it, it was a lot of things to delay you with shuffles and mm -hmm. with the spider and things like this. So um, I, I, yeah, I entered a few chain binds with that, got it up to eight chains, and I was really excited about chain binds. Um, so that's uh, level, is it level three? It is just about um, uh, or just below level three? Uh, um, well, this one, so the eight chains is level two. Um, and then it was only, um, I went to a monthly event, my store was doing a monthly, because I, obviously I wanted, I still hadn't yet to win any keys or any playmats or anything, okay. I just won the little the little cards. Um, yes. And my store was holding a, a monthly survival three deck, survival, uh -huh. bring three decks along and play. Um, so I bought three decks along on that morning, 
um, while we were waiting for more people to show up, I bought a deck. Um, and when it was opened, it was the Double Time Traveler deck. Um, and I've never played with one. Um, <laughs> and I, I entered it that day. I managed to swap one of my decks out in for the Double Time Traveler. Um, but obviously, since I'd only just bought it and that way I knew much about it, um, I did go into it and lose my first game. Um, somebody oh, had no. a very. So uh, that was it for the deck, uh, because it's a full survival, it was yes. once you lose, yep. that deck is out, and then you have to... Yes, was it the first, first deck? game it was out. You chose that one to be the, your first one, and then yes, you have a Yes, yeah, I played it first, because it looked really fun to play, uh, so no. I thought, like, let's give it a go. And my my first tournament ever, I it was in my local store here in Woking, and um, I also got Time Traveler, single Time Traveler, and okay, I was yeah. so excited, and the Sting as well, that I, I was so excited that I, I had... It's my best deck, I mean, it's, it's amazing, and... I, I basically ended up seventh in the tournament. Even my, oh, okay. my son, my eight-year-old son, defeated me in the final, in the, <laughs> final, and he ended up third. So, so I totally understand, totally understand when you have an amazing deck, but this is your first time playing it, and it's so hard. And also, you get so excited. Oh my God! And you want to milk the the time traveler, and maybe you know you, you don't get the success that you deserve. But well, you got the success you deserve. A bit later. Yeah, yeah. What well, once you play with it? Because I think somebody did a poll um, in the Keyforge group asking the plays a deck should be before you get an average. I think the average is about 20, pe- 20 plays. Yes. The, pe- the people think that you should play a deck 20 times and that should give you the average Very of good. the deck. So obviously playing it once and getting defeated, you should obviously just give up because it might just be. Because uh, yeah, when I first played it, I didn't know all the little combos. I like, knew what Time Traveler exactly. does, but then it's like, what else can you do with Time Traveler? What else can you do with the other cards in the deck? So, yeah. um, so, so we just we just discovered in I organized a little tournament in my in my in my place and <laughs> one, my best friend uh, uh, Anthony he got time traveler in the deck and and he he could have won the tournament but uh, he after the tournament and everything he discovered that with the Sima syndrome he could archive it and then use it again the the, the turn later and yes. I, I didn't think of that combination so so yeah okay let's move on so um. What makes it great? Do you feel the, the, the game is exciting? I mean, what, what kind of uh, key features makes it stand out uh, compared to other um, card games? Do you play other card games? Or is this yes, um, before this, I played Star Wars Destiny. Okay. Um, yes. that, was, that was my first ever card game I played. Um, so I was excited off into that, and I, I, I got into Star Wars Destiny very competitively. Mm-hmm. Um, I traveled around the UK playing regionals. I went to the European Championships. Wow. Um, I made top 30, top 16. I think European Championships. So um, this was a thing as a sexy uh, as a sex in the making. No, you were already almost there uh, with yeah, the, uh, <laughs> almost. The um, and I even drove to um, Germany to play in a Galactic Qualifier for Star Wars oh, Destiny. Um, so, so I played that for quite a long time. Um, and then but the, the new downside, I think, sometimes was that with it was like other CC like collectors card games where. If there was a certain deck out there, maybe won a big tournament in America, mm-hmm. everybody would suddenly just make that deck. Um, and I think when I went along to the UK Championships, okay. um, Star Wars Destiny, there was maybe 20 or 30 decks that were exactly the same because they just <laughs> copied a deck from. The, so yeah. uh, I know that's what people. I mean, you, you know, you want to win the deck, which is fine. And mm-hmm. but obviously, it was just sometimes a bit like, oh, it's a repetitive. So that was maybe the. Deck. But as I was new to card games, so I didn't know that was the thing of. Yeah, what people like and, to and actually, <laughs> this is basically one uh, key difference, right, with Keyforge because they cannot do yes. net decking. If you want, no, no, exactly, you cannot have twenty of the same decks. You might have twenty of shadows, right? But yes. <laughs> it won't be the yeah, same yeah, combination. But, yeah, but every every single game is unique. So when you when you went to go to these tournaments, um, you don't know. Every time you sit down, you don't know how that game is going to play out. Or as if you sit down at Star Wars Destiny, like you might see a few characters and think, I know roughly what might happen here, but in this game, it's like you don't know yeah. how, any, how any game is going to go. So it's really it's good. Exciting. So yeah. moving on, um, so we are now in Eindhoven. You just arrived. It's your first day. Um, how was the, you know, when when registering into the event, you know, how was was it well organized? Uh, how was the atmosphere? Where, how were the people, um, the contestants? Uh, was yeah, it was really good. So the venue was quite good. It was just a, a massive hall, the venue, um, right in the centre of town. Um, so it was really easy to get to. I I just picked a hotel in the centre of town. Um, and there was also um, X-Wing going on at the same time, and there was a like, Star Wars Destiny Galactic qualifier also okay. going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, but with, yeah, with the Key Forge, it was, it was very easy set up. There was maybe 20, 30 tables there. People were already playing casual. Um, mm-hmm. The time was quite good, so there was half nine registration. So there was no much to get in there. 
first thing in the morning. But and then there was about fifty. Pe I think there was fifty-two people on day one. Um, but obviously, but obviously they, um, but registration was fine. Um, there's quite a few people, different languages. And it, obviously, I was speaking English, but no matter who I spoke to, there was never any issue with no problem. Yeah. Um, any problems at all. So the, the event itself was it was really well organised. So they had all the prizes like straight away, along with obviously a big widescreen TV showing you all the prizes. All, so there's no. Because I've been to other events um, where sometimes the prizes you don't see till the end, or you're still waiting uh -huh. for them. To Life, but every, every, everything was like ready to see and make you jealous of because <laughs> as when you enter the tournament um you get 30 amber shards just for entering mm -hmm. um and i went over to there with 50 amber shards i managed to, i don't have a lot of decks i only have about 10 or 12 decks but i managed okay. to obviously in chain bounds you get a, um, an amber for winning and an amber for entering so i managed to build up some for obviously Very winning nice. and things like this but i went over with 50 not being able to afford <laughs> much on the table so i was like when do i get my 30 for entering i want to buy something <laughs> exactly and so did you did you just straight away just just got something just in case uh, they ran out or um no so we did ask to say you know because obviously we asked how long it's going to take and they yes. said it was going to be 30 minutes after the event finished okay um on that day and i was like well, what happens if how many matches do you have and they did say no matter if everybody bought one of everything we would still have enough because they kind of i think they bought everything kind of that event and then from I know when it might then move to another event from the UK, so it kind of all stays together in a big lump sum. That's good, um, just to make sure that everybody, you know, there's no disappointments. So that's very good. No, I was a bit concerned yeah. about that. I, shall I? Because I, you only have like 10 or 12 decks, I have 28, right? And yes. I, <laughs> and I want more, but, but you know, <laughs> I get in trouble with the wife. So, uh, yeah. cool. So then, uh, what happened then on, on the first, on the first um, day? Was you one A day one A, and then yes. you have how many rounds? Six rounds, right? It was six rounds, yes. Um, and it's just one match per round, right? Yes, yeah, six rounds. Um, yeah, best of one per round. Um, <laughs> and, and in order to make it to day two, you need to be five one or better. Or better, yes. Uh, yeah, so it's, and you it's, made it. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so you can afford one one mess up. And then that's it. Um, and you had your mess up at the very end, I believe. No, you were only yes. the, the, when you were already qualified. You just uh, it's okay. There's no more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I managed. I managed to win my first five games, and then I lost the the, the sixth game that day. But um, but but I was going into some of the yeah. But, but, was, but going into every game, sometimes you know, carefully. Um, when the when the match started, obviously all the pairings went up. You sat down at the table. Um, and you shuffled and did all that stuff. Said if you went first, and then it was the clock started with 37 minutes. And obviously okay. for the first two minutes, this is where you exchange Very card lists. Yeah. Um, obviously, if somebody has a different language, you can scan their deck and load it on the app. And uh, which I sometimes I prefer. Um, I even if it's English, I sometimes prefer to look at it on the app because sometimes I don't know all the cards. Mm -hmm. So rather than wasting time asking what the card is, I can just click on that on the app. And it just I have a very hard. very technical question here because I'm very very curious. Um, okay. Were you allowed? Ah, it was an Arcon. It was an Arcon tournament because in Birmingham it's going to be sealed. And yes. I have this question. I already emailed the guys from Organized Play. Um, if you are allowed to scan it before entering, or you have to scan it later, because uh, uh, I, I know other Arcon. I, I know other sealed events they say don't scan it don't because scan they it, say yes. but because because once your deck is scanned it's then open to the public so before I play you I can look up your deck list yeah I am and obviously have have an advantage of you so it's meant to be that's, that's why you right. get I think the extra ten minutes that's the point because you have three you have to choose you have to choose which one okay yes, so yeah. it's a strategic personal thing that is better not to um, but I, I would also suggest also learning the Age of Ascension cards for Birmingham mm -hmm. um, because it it was also told to us. Um, that Birmingham is going to be Age of Ascension sealed. Really? So, yes. Is, is this confirmed? Yes. Because I'm very yes. excited now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, wow, well, this is yeah. amazing. This is amazing. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased. Which means that anybody, can, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yes. Yes. So, so especially you don't know, even if you know some of the cards, whether they. Um, I don't know if they will spoil every single card in that, which means you could go into it looking at some cards, not knowing what them cards do. Yes. Um, so you'll have so to, maybe you'll I have to look through your deck. I would ask the guys maybe to give, if, if it's possible to have, because it will be brand new cards unless they publish all the all the list of cards beforehand. If maybe yes. they need to give extra time for people to be able to read the card. I don't know. It would be maybe yes. five, five minutes extra or something just to, to you know, because you're going to be like, oh, what does that card do? You know, let me read it. You know, it's going to take... Yeah, a, but, but, so, 
especially yeah, because it's going to be even when you swap over decks, you're going to look at cards and not have a clue what any of them. Exactly. You know, I haven't looked at many of the. That um, makes me very excited. Out. You know, how many games do you go on a tournament without knowing what's going to, you know, what are you going to have? You know, this is very unique. <laughs> wow, yeah, this is exclusive, really exclusive in the channel. Thank you, Rachel, for the special secret trip. Um, <laughs> so the next one is, uh, how about a one B? What did you do on on one B? Um, so um, since I had my um, boyfriend come over with me, because uh -huh. um, it, it was his birthday weekend, so on mm -hmm. his birthday it was on the Friday, and obviously he was in the hotel most of the day because I was like playing games and he doesn't <laughs> play games. He doesn't um, play keyboard stayed... himself. Yeah, he doesn't play any games. It's like my all. wife. He uh, doesn't play any games. <laughs> so, um, and I'll say I stayed till quite late because after on day 1A, once the event finished, um, they held a survival tournament on day uh -huh. 1A just to gain a few more amber shards. So it was four rounds survival. Um, and I also played in that just to try and get some more amber shards. Yes. Which meant I didn't leave till about half seven at night, <laughs> which meant we couldn't do much on his birthday. So on day 1B, <laughs> better than play side pods or look up many of the decks that we're going through, mm -hmm. uh, I just went to Amsterdam for the day um, and just sightseed nice. in Amsterdam. <laughs> great, great day out. So, yes, yeah. And then it was the final, you know, the important day, the finals, uh, day two. So how many people were there? It was 64 or 32. How many people were there for the final? Hey. How many? 20, no? 20, yes. Yeah, two zero. So on, on day 1A, there was six people that went through. So out of 52 people, um, six of us, there was one person in six now, five people on 5-1. And in day... Um, 1B, there was 133 entries, yes, of which yes. 14 of them were 5-1 or better. And um, it's going to be something similar in Birmingham, because I had tickets for Saturday. I, cannot, I have to work on, on Friday, so, so okay. it would be yeah, for me. Yeah, it would be something similar. Yeah. Cool. So, well, um, what was the, the, the key highlight, you know, uh, other than winning? I mean, it's, you know, how was the experience? Because uh, being single elimination, only one match, you, you, you lose, you're out. You know, what were going through your head? You know, what kind of feeling? It was, it was very scary because some of the decks that you see you hear about a lot. So, um, as, I, as I liked about Time Travel, but you always heard of other people speaking about, oh, Time Travel would be so much better with a library access, yes. or phase shift, or a reverse time with all these cards. And um, on day one, I played somebody who had a single Time Traveler. He had a phase shift, he had library access, he had reverse time. As soon as I saw that in his deck list, I thought, what if he pulls off this combo and can draw lots and lots of cards? Um, I ended up being his only loss on day one. And then on oh. day two, he was my first matchup in the top 18. Oh. Or the top 16, sorry. Um, because what they did on day two was, since there was 20 people, um, they had the top few people play off to make the top 16 cut. Uh -huh. um, so since my only loss was against a 6 nil person, I had a bye on, on day two. So I automatically qualified for top 16. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I played my first game was against the deck I already played, which is the Time Traveler Library Access Fear Shift. Reverse time. Traveler time, and, time Traveler. Um, <laughs> it, it's very scary to see it. When you see them first play it, when they first put them in the Library Access and the, mm. you know, the Fear Shift, whatever, you, you're just kind of keeping your fingers crossed that uh, you don't want to, you know, be bad in your opponent, but obviously everybody's there to win, so you're hoping a little bit to be like, you know, I still want to win. Hopefully things pull off for your opponent because you want everybody to have a fun game, but ultimately <laughs> you, don't, you don't really want them to win in a certain way. You want, you want to win, to, absolutely. You want absolutely. to win um, without sounding mean. <laughs> um, some games, and going into day two, as I had a quick look at, because the, all the decks were posted online, so I had a quick look at some of the decks, and mm -hmm. uh, my deck struggles, but my deck has got no board wipes. Yeah. Um, so normally, I, the games I've lost is that somebody, if you put down four or five heavy disc creatures or, or sanctum creature, <laughs> I can't kill your disc or sanctum, so I just the armor. It. That's always my problem. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, so you just end up weeping for four or six. I can't kill, so I end up just trying to, so I end up being an amber race. So there was somebody on day two who had a horseman, four horsemen, but also had seven other sanctum creatures. So Ooh, they had 11 really sanctum it. creatures. And I was just thinking, I don't want to play that deck because if they get out these Sanctum cards, I, you know, I have no way of killing any of them. So, um, so you, you thankfully it was really, out. The success to your deck was uh, because it was quite quick, right? Uh, you you have 17 Amber, I believe. No, 17 direct or 17 or 19 direct Amber. Yes, yes. So, so my deck is very quick in that um, the, the, the raw Amber, so the Amber just on the card alone, there were 17 of them. Yes. Um, but then that doesn't include what bait and switch gets me. That doesn't include um, playing an urchin to possibly steal one. Obviously, you've got relentless whispers. Yes. 
yeah. which if I kill somebody, obviously if I do play a sanctum creature, I sometimes just kill myself just to get that steal if yes. I need that steal. <laughs> I do um, the same. <laughs> So, you know, if you're on six and I have to kill an urchin, then you know you'll kill an urchin to it. Yes. Um, so yeah, so sometimes so that 70 number grows up if you start adding on beat and switch urchin. The disc runner when you reap steal one, so if it yes. pulls off one, the, card, and yes. also you've got psychic network which steals one for ready Mars creatures. So That's right. there's a lot. So it's 17 more amber on top of the stealing if you can lots pull of, off the lots stealing. Lots of nice sight synergies there. And um, I don't know if you know, but um, I well created this uh, Russia score. And uh, the website is going to be up uh, this Friday, so so I find it, it took me forever because I really am not web developer or anything. It took me, it took me a lot of time, but it's working now, and um, I will put it in the comments or something. And um, and I I ran your deck through through it, and you got a score of forty five, I think, or something like that. Like to me, forty five, anything in the forties is already very quick. So okay, yes. plus all the synergies, you know, it was uh, a good recipe for success. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, uh, there was a like a award ceremony or something. It was any kind of, um, um, you know, it was a, like a big thing, or or it was very low key, and it just the organizers came to you and say, you won. <laughs> uh, nobody can really know what what to do. So obviously, when the game finished, um, obviously you had you, you got to go, you know, just kind of take it in for a few minutes. Obviously, you're a bit. You know, it, it's hard to take it in straight away to realize that it's all over. You, you know, the, the vault tour is over and you've you've did it. Um, so obviously afterwards, Alex um, did an interview. Um, yes. We 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 because we spoke about some things and there were some pictures where I held up um, a Mars playmat, the vault tour. So I, I'll yes. say so a lot of people diss Mars, but I respect Mars. I wanted to make sure the Mars was good. Mars helped me so much on the day. I mean, on day two. One round Mars helped me gain six amber and lose my opponent seven amber just in one of the rounds. And um, so it was, yeah, there were some pictures, there was an interview, and then it was they did a little announcement over the Tannoy because people were still playing side events. Yes. Um, but there was no you don't get a prize itself for winning um, in terms of a physical prize. Yes, like a check, you get, right? You come with a massive check. No, no, there's nothing like that. <laughs> There's, there's no award I can live around, but you get 500 amber shards, which yes. is an insane amount. Obviously, on day one, um, everybody gets 30 amber shards just for entering. Yes. And yes. Then every time you win a game, you get 15 amber yes. shards. So quite, quite generous. I, so on day one, I'd finished with 105. So five wow. games got me 75 and 30. And then day two, um, you get more amber shards depending on where you finish. Yes. So many. So, so in total, I got 605 amber shards. Wow. Um, over the course of almost, the week, which is an insane amount. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's yeah. talking about the chair and about the table, but to be honest, everybody has chairs and tables. To me, I would just get, start getting all the metal keys and all the play mats and, and also even decks. You know, if you just need some sealed decks, I would even spend my my shards on, on more decks. You know, I, I don't know. They wouldn't let people do that. Um, so people, some people did ask us, they can they spend it on decks, and they said, um, you can't put a price on the amber shards. So and then people would try and work out, well, if ten amber shards got me a deck, that means ten amber shards are worth. Nine pounds and nine dollars, then okay. people would then start to price I, up. I understand. That's so, okay. so they don't do it on physical prices. Um, okay. but, but I did get myself. So I, I got um, I was like, I got a Mars playmat. Um, I also got a time traveler playmat because it's what won me the tournament. Of course, so of course. Get... Uh, yeah, and and you had shadows and a shadow playmat as well. I had the three of them. <laughs> um, and then I also, I, I st since I still hadn't won any metal keys, I got myself obviously some metal keys. Nice, nice. Got a little Andoven pin. Because yes. it's obviously unique as well, and I get, just got some of the, I got all of the houses, the chain trackers, the little yes. altar. Yes. Um, so I did. I did want to spend them all. I still got over four hundred left because I thought, what if in the future, what if I go to another altar six months and land something That's different, right. or maybe you know an age of ascension one or something? So I didn't want to spend very, everything. Very well done. <laughs> good save. Saving is always good. Yeah. So, yeah. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about that, I believe that you also win this. You only mentioned that there's no prize, but there is actually a prize, which is. You get to travel to a, a new vault tour of your choice uh, with. Uh, uh, so yes, there, there is that. Um, that's a, that's so a pretty I good think, prize. Yes, I, I'm not sure if it's top four, or top two, but I know definitely top two. Um, you get um, an entry. I, th I uh -huh. think it's a top four as well. I think top four, you get a free entry into any other vault tour. So obviously, uh -huh. I could have got free entry into Birmingham if I only got second place. Okay. Um, or if you had, a, if you already had an entry, they said you would get a refund. Okay. If you already have an entry somewhere, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as the so as the winner, I got you get free flights yeah. and an accommodation yeah. to another vault tour. Um, obviously, I, I don't know what one I'm going to go yet because I want to hear because um, there's a certain budget 
for for obviously my flights and accommodation. So I wanted to see what the budget is yes. and then see what vultures are happening and maybe I might possibly add a, a bit onto the budget and maybe say let's let fly me to America, here's a little bit extra money and maybe make a bit of a holiday from it. <laughs> uh, but how exciting. I, I'm very jealous. <laughs> I'll try to I'll try my best in Birmingham. <laughs> okay. So what would you say to the Keyforge community? What, you know, is it worth to, to, to play a ball tour? Yes, I, I, whether you even you think you have a, a really good deck or not. I mean, as there's some people price up these decks, not price them up, but value the decks on like the SAS scores and stuff. But um, the person I was playing in the final, his SAS score was in mid 70s. Okay. So some people look, would look at that and think, no, it's not in the 80s, it's not in the 90s, it's not going to be good enough. But you know, but he got to the final. So sometimes it's not always about the deck you have, but how you play it and how your cards play out. So, and, and even just the environment. I mean, even if you were to lose, just to play to play so many other decks and see how the people do things and sometimes people pull off little synergies or little combos you think yeah that, that's a good little combo i could possibly try that um but just the atmosphere and obviously you have so many other things going on you can enter seals you can enter side pods and just play more things and, and obviously just the prices you've got unique prices as well um and they do allow obviously if you know somebody going to a vault tour um they can log into your app their app and get, so, like when I was in Birmingham, when I was in Eindhoven, I logged into my friend's vault and bought them a playmat from the keys and was able to bring it back. So, it's working. you can help other people just get get yourself some playmats or something. Or even if you know if you all can't go, one can go maybe let one person scan all the decks and then bring it along, and you can have a playmat between you or something. But the, the experience itself is just just amazing. I mean, whether people lost or not, everybody just seemed happy to be there and having a good time. It's there wasn't any bad atmosphere at all. <laughs> so for me. Uh, did you have an initial goal uh, of where would you want to, to, to place in the tournament at the beginning? Or... Um, well, I always wanted to at least get the day two. Um, so okay. that's normally, even when I went to like, you know, European champs and stuff last year, I was like, if you get the day two, that's such an achievement because you, you, you've planned for the whole weekend. Yes. So it's nice to play the side pods, but like, it just, just to say you make it a day two, mm -hmm. um, the, the, to get your top 16 you know, is really good. And, um, but if you, something you never think you make it there. So obviously, like, like I can say with my deck, since there's no in the chamber and events it didn't always win i mean it lost its first game it's lost mm -hmm. sometimes got to the finals and just lost when people get out just heavy stuff and i can't defeat them so a little bit i did know it was a good deck and i can gain quickly it's not 100 percent winning mm -hmm. i played it in christopher without chains and with chains and again it didn't win every single time so which is good you want the deck to win every single game exactly um, it, it makes it more interesting right more exciting you really really don't know you know you really don't know if you're gonna make yes, it um, <laughs> Okay. It was, it, yeah, it was, it was really good. I, I really, really enjoyed it. it was... Fantastic. Uh, just for the guys in the, in the, you know, look, looking at the video, um, my personal goal for uh, the ball tour, obviously, to go to day two is the dream, no, and to win it. But just if I can get the play mat and the metal case, that's not, that's not. I'm, you know, I will play all the side events, anything to get the shards, to to get the metal case on the play mat. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they look at me, so that's. So that's the price of one because the way you might get a, a chair in a gaming table, it won't look really good in a in a gaming store or something if you're at your local store. But obviously, just to to go to back to your local and put down a, a Volto playmat or put down the keys, it's just it's unique. It's it's exactly. even I even get jealous of even the wormhole playmats or the metal keys at the moment because you know they're unique that everybody has them and I really want them and, exactly. and you know everybody wants something that's unique in the game. <laughs> and 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 this is just the final the final bit. I believe that you you have your own uh, keyforge store, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. So, so I do um, sell open decks, um, mm -hmm. and I allow people. There's a deck finder where people, if you like certain synergies, um, mm -hmm. like I quite like in my deck. There's a synergy where you play this thing, um, possibly take the ram burn, and they think, oh, you can't forge. Then you have a key abduction in hand. So you might think there's certain little synergies you might be able to pull off. So yeah, you can search it up, and yeah, I mean, obviously some people do think I might have picked the best decks, but oh, oh, there is good decks on there. Um, there's people like to buy them, so it's the um, yeah, but, uh, there's always even combinations that people don't even think about um, of certain things. Yes, because you know, also... You never know what's going to... Because I only found one as well when I started playing my deck, which was um, I have the Blight Bit or Blip card, which is the yes. Mars. When you Thank weep you. it, your next Mars creature comes in ready. So yes. sometimes you would play um, Blip it, and then you would reap him last, and then you would return all your Mars creatures to your hand with key abduction. But even if you don't forge a key, you play by Blight Bit first because he comes in ready because you've reaped with him before. And obviously, so it allows you that extra weeping things. And that, I came across that by accident where I was playing on Crucible online. And obviously, I'd weep with some creatures. I returned them. And as soon as I played, the next creature came in ready. And obviously, I realized, oh, that was because Blip. 
Yes. Uh, really, so it was only a, a pure mistake online, I realized that's a good combo. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, which then went on to help me, obviously, in future. <laughs> Fantastic. So if anybody wants to um, contact you or reach, reach to you, how, how would they do that? Um, so, so the website is um, www.rachelsgamestore.com. Obviously, I do have a Facebook page, and I do obviously post each Friday um, in, in, some of the, in some of the groups to advertise any upcoming, um, anything upcoming on the website. <laughs> very good, very good. Any news, any new items? Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you, Rachel. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having on. And good, good luck good with the next one. <laughs> Yeah, it's always that debate of do I bring this, because I mean with, with the next four terms, like do I bring the same deck, do I look for another deck, do I, you know, so it's, uh, you know, you don't want to show up to two vault tours and the same deck, or, or do you, do you want to show the deck of that kid, or will, will people hate me if I do that, that's, <laughs> that's always the question. Very good point, we'll see because you can, <laughs> they already advertise the list of the vault tours, at least the ones that are already advertised, and you know when it's an Archon one, when it's a uh, Seal one, and I think there is one in the US that they're going to do survival as well as the main, the main. Three, uh, three decks survival. I've that's seen right. That, that's yes. right. That's quite interesting. For me, I, I'm just thinking about the side events because I, I know I'm going to lose at some point. So uh, for the survival, I really want to try. And I just am try, trying to think, do I put my best deck first or do I put it last? I, I really don't know what to do the, the strategy there. So, yeah, that's what I think. They did a survival at the Eindhoven. Yes. Um, and it was two deck survival, but it was just four rounds. And it didn't matter where you finish, obviously, each time you got a win, you got so many Ember Shards. Mm -hmm. um, and I did put my, death deck, my best deck forward, only because you needed the wins to get the Ember Shards, so I didn't want to get a lost. Yes, and miss exactly. out Ember Shards, well, I'll put best deck first. But in, in a big event, obviously, if you know your best deck is out, you might be a bit upset and yes. think, oh, these ones aren't as good. Um, but that's okay. it. Oh, do you want to leave your best deck to the last no one that, you know? I don't know. That it, I keep so I keep talking with my friend it. Anthony, and he says, "Oh, you should do three to one, like right? your worst one first, and, and try to get a, as much juice out of it, and then the second one second, and the best one at the end, because people will do the opposite." And then he has this theory. I really don't know. I think maybe we do a, a trial <laughs> or something. It's, it's exciting. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, but it's good that you get three lives. So even you know, if you play one, at least at least you know, if you lose a game, you're still okay. You're still yeah. in there. Exactly. It's going a bit about day two, knowing that if I lose, this is it all over. So, so it's very much, yeah. but at least it's always nice having a bit of, um, you know, I can, I can lose, I can afford to lose. But if you, don't, you want to think you're going to lose, you want, you want to go in thinking you're going to win. Um, <laughs> but at least it's nice doing it if you're behind, your, game, your day isn't over. <laughs> and final question. So this final question is about the new expansion, the Age of Ascension. Uh, there have been a, a number of uh, cards already released and uh, at the beginning, I was a little bit disappointed with the, with the very few that came out at the very beginning. But then new cards have been coming up, and I, I'm really excited about the shards, and I'm really excited about about all these annoying beast cards. I really like these because they're very annoying. And uh, yeah. I, I also see Mars, and uh, in Mars they have this about stunning. I think that now is the big thing in Age of Ascension. It's about stunning. Like if you rip, then you you get stunned or things like that. So I think it's going to be very different. Uh, it's going to be, it's not just more of the same. I think it's going to be very interesting. Did you yeah, I think it's good that they're changing the game in certain ways, and not just keeping the houses kind of as they are. Um, it's good that they're putting extra, extra things in. Um, but I, I like that they've only carried over so many cards, and because it, it keeps both sets really good. So people, you're going to have sets, and you know, you might not have a bait and switch again. Obviously, we don't know all the cards that are going to move over. So it's really good knowing that all, all decks are good. So it means if you know you've bought twenty, thirty decks, you know that well, they're still going to be good. Then you one from there because mm -hmm. you, know, you never know what's going to synergize. Against people that. are people are convinced that there's not going to be the other switch. I don't know. I, I know that people say that is the best card and is the one to be the most feared. For me, I've never been. I I must say, I have it like in eight or ten decks, but um. <laughs> I, you just lose some, you know, they steal from you. I know this is quite devastating to, and I've done it where I stole six. I mean, uh, I've done it myself, no? And it, yes, feels yeah, great. But, but it feels great. But but I don't think it's such a big thing, you know? I think, don't step to heaven. I have, yesterday I was playing, and I have 32 Amber. And I know, because I have this thing. It's a crazy thing. The guy keep doing control the week and everything. And I couldn't, I couldn't kill the, the sting. 
So I have 32 Amber, and then he played Oster to Heaven, and, and it was very painful. <laughs> that was more painful than Beta Switch. <laughs> yeah, it is, it, it is true. So with Beta Switch, everybody hates it, but on average, I think you get about maybe two or three on average, because yeah. normally your opponent isn't that far ahead of you in most games. Okay. Normally it is. Sometimes you, it's nice when you just forge, and they have six. It's like, oh, this is quite good. You know, that's a, that's, that's, that's a nice one, but that's fair. That doesn't happen in every game, so yeah, normally it's a two or three steal, and sometimes when you get it round one, um, like I, think, I remember in the final I had it round one, and I was just, you end up just holding on to it and holding on to it and thinking, is there going to be a dead card in your hand? Obviously, it's going to be used at some point, but... Exactly. ...up space in your hand, but yeah, obviously like, I do like Ephesus and Principle, or it hurts yourself, but there's a lot of other cards which, you know, are just are just as good as, as bait and switch, and the same thing when people think like library access, but again, it doesn't always pair off. You could draw your library access and draw straight into another. Yeah. And even with this Neff and Seed and library access, you know, draw two, but it doesn't mean you're going to draw exactly what you need. It's, I mean, I, I think there was a library access Neff and Seed deck um, at Eindhoven, but it went 4-2 on day one. Um, so it's it, it might work one or two games for you, but, you know, things aren't going to work every single it's game. It's just very you, flashy, is... right? I, I really would like to have one, I'm, I'm saying now. But, yeah. but it's very flashy, you know, and so the satisfaction to pull it off, you know, and draw the entire deck in your hand, that's just, you know, I don't think you need to win, but, but you know, just doing all of that, it's like so forbidden. It's, it's, sometimes no? it's, yeah, sometimes yeah, it is fun. Um, it, it, when I played um, Star Wars Destiny, um, the very last time I played at the UK Champions, there was a deck that was an OTK deck, and it was going to be draw your whole deck round one and try and kill your opponent round one. Uh -huh. Um and it was, and I didn't always, it didn't pair off very well. I, I lost like four or five games, but the, the fun of it when you did draw your whole hand, even if you couldn't win, it was just amazing to see that you can do certain things and get 30 <laughs> cards or you know, 20 cards in your hand. It's just, it's such a fun way. I'll do your opponent just sits there it's and hopes fun. that you don't win. <laughs> um, I agree. I, I don't think, I don't think we will see this kind of library access, Nepenthesis, uh, phase shift, uh, key charts, uh, combo deck winning an Archon tournament. I don't think we will see because you really are relying on the on the combination. I, I think I think it's much easier just to cycle really quickly through your deck if you have like tons of amber and everything. This is like almost foolproof. No? It doesn't matter whether you're drawing because you have all, most of your cards are giving you amber. So that's so much easier than to have to pull out the combo. Now, pulling the combo, you know, that's yeah, the yeah, best feeling. Right? Combo, but, like, and there's a lot of cards to stop in the combo, like in my deck. Um, like when I played in the final, um, my opponent did have Neff and Seed in his deck. I don't think he, he didn't have library access. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry, he did have library access, actually. Um, but obviously, I had two Nexus. Mm -hmm. So my two Nexus is down. When he had library access, when he had sorry, Neff and Seed in his hand, he couldn't play it because he couldn't kill both my Nexus. <laughs> so he ended up having to discard his Neff and Seed, which meant that little combo. Um, okay. So and there's obviously so many other cards pulled in remote access, and there's so many cards which will just hit that artifact, and the, the combo is gone. Um, so exactly. yeah, so it, it doesn't always work. Um, obviously, when it does work, it's nice, but um, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't always work. <laughs> okay, so I think that's the end of the of the interview. I hope you enjoyed that at home, and uh, I'll see you in next week. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Uh, welcome back. Um, basically, we we are back from the interview. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, next week, I still don't know what I'm going to be doing. I think maybe my son will make a special appearance. Uh, we will see. Because I think this game is, is so streamlined and so easy to play that uh, even, uh, you know, children can, can can play no problem. My son has eight, he's, he's eight years old. He's been playing since seven. Uh, well, pretty much uh, seven and 7.9 years old. So it's almost like eight, or eight years old. And he's doing very well, and he's got third third pl place in in tournaments, in two tournaments. Uh, so he's doing great, and I think maybe if we see more of him uh, talking to similar uh, children, maybe they will they will get into the into the hobby, and you know parents and children playing together. That's that's uh, really really pleasurable. So. That's it for, for today. Like and subscribe, the bell, all these kind of things. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, episode. Bye.